good morning. Everybody can hear me okay? Y'all good over there? Okay. Well, for uh, for many of you, thank you for coming this morning. Um, we are having some technical difficulty with our live stream, but we'll be recording the service, and we'll be putting that online for others. So for those that will be seeing the recording, we apologize that uh, our live stream isn't quite up and running just yet. Uh, we'll be working on that and hopefully get the signal. Uh, technology, you never know with uh, with technology. So what a great day to be here this morning uh, under this beautiful tent. Thank you to Happy Rants and to the tent crew that came out on Friday to put this up uh, in the heat and uh, so that we could have some shade for worship. Uh, it's a beautiful day. The, the Lord has given us a breeze. He's given us shade. He's woke us up. So what a great day to be gathering and praising him this morning. Before we go into the actual worship service, I want to cover just a few announcements. Uh, the Father's Day recognition, our, our annual uh, recognition of those special men in our lives, um, those forms are due today. And the forms are located next to Paul over there uh, in the uh, carrier underneath the rock. Uh, you can fill out the form and put your contribution in our offering bucket. Uh, so you can place that in there. Just make sure that you earmark it for our treasurer for what that, that special fund or that, um, that is for Father's Day recognition. But they are due today. Again, a very special thank you goes out to Happy Rents. Um, they are currently closed. They've been closed since February, uh, and so they've had to adjust to that. But we thank them and Joe Hodgen, the Hodgen family, and everybody that came out to, to put this up so that we can meet outdoors. Um, we will continue to meet outdoors, at least maybe for the next couple of Sundays. Uh, what The purpose of that uh, is to, to kind of see where we're headed um, with the state and the pandemic numbers, we have to rely on our state and local officials and what they say is our, our numbers and that sort of thing. And, and while there may be mixed opinions on, on the virus and, and what we should do to respond to that, we need to consider our neighbor and be, think, uh, be uh, thoughtful and mindful of those that are the least of these that may be having some health issues, that may be having some other, other things go on, or that may just have a little bit of fear over coming back together indoors. And so we're trying to make provisions to include the tent so that everyone can come together and they can ease back into an in-person worship so that uh, they have their own comfort level, so that everyone feels more comfortable coming back together. But we are going to be watching very closely. As we know, numbers have risen, but we also know testing has increased. Uh, so we want to make sure that we balance that and, and listen to what our, our state and local officials are telling us, but also make the best decision under God's will. And so we want to, to be able to come together and celebrate his presence in our life. I also want to say thank you to David Robinette Sr., who held an adult Sunday school class this morning over in the, by the trees near the museum. Uh, there was a fairly good crowd of folks gathering together to be in God's Word and to study this morning. Uh, it was good to see that. I did uh, take a couple of pictures. Sorry, David, but you were not in them, I promise. Um, yeah, I, I got you. So uh, um, did take a couple pictures that are online just to, just to show that we were gathering together and that we were preparing for a worship. Yeah, yeah, he's smiling with his eyes. Any other announcements? All right, for our Psalm 145. And so if you would just bow and, and close your eyes and just listen to the words of Psalm 145. I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation commends your works to another. They tell of your mighty acts. They speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty, and I will meditate on your wonderful works. They tell of the power of your awesome works, and I will proclaim your great deeds. They celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. All your works praise you, Lord. Your faithful people extol you. They tell of your glory of your kingdom and speak of your might, so that all people may know of your mighty acts and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is trustworthy in all he promises and faithful in all he does. The Lord upholds all who fall and lifts up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food at the proper time. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and faithful in all he does. 
the Lord is near to all who call on him and to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He hears the cry and saves them. The Lord watches over, who, watches over all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak in praise of the Lord. Let every creature praise his holy name forever and ever. Amen. What an awesome psalm to open us up in worship this morning, to place our hearts in a worshipful state so that we come together in the presence of the Holy Spirit and in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. What an awesome day it is to worship together. So this morning, as I said last week, we are not doing any type of formal offering. We will not be passing things among each other. So there is a table over here to the left of Paul, and uh, he, here we go. And uh, he uh, has the, on the table there, there's some forms, and then there's a bucket. That's our offering bucket. If you feel led or you feel uh, the need to give to the Ministry of Center Friends, you may place your offering there, and it will be collected at the end of the service. Also, we have our online uh, donation ability now, so you can go to centerfriends.org, and you can give that way as well. So at this time, I'm going to ask Whitney to come up for a brief children's moment. Good morning. Hope y'all are doing well this morning. Um, okay, I think all my kids are over here in this corner. Hey, kids. <laughs> all right. So I'm going to hold up some items, and I want you to tell me what you think of when you see them. Okay, somebody said sun. Beach, shade. Oh, tennis. Okay. Shoes. Walking. Running. Ruth, what is it? Hiking. Playing. Okay. Those are all great guesses. What about these two things? Nike. Okay. So, as you know, Nike is one of the world's leading manufacturers of sports equipment. At one time, they were just known as a running shoe company. But now they make all kinds of sports equipment for about every sport you can imagine. Um, I think everybody in the world would recognize the Nike symbol if they saw it. So whenever we think of Nike, I also think of their slogan. Does anybody know what the Nike slogan is? Just do it. Just do it. Good. All right, so when you really think about it, what does that really mean? So since Nike is in the business of making sports equipment, it means that when it comes to sports, don't just talk about it, do it. So when you're thinking about basketball, don't just talk about playing basketball, go out and do it. When you're talking about baseball, just go out and play it or go out and run when you're thinking about um, running. So um, it reminded me of a story in the Bible. And one day Jesus was with his disciples and they asked him to teach them how to pray. Jesus didn't say, well, first you get down on your knees, then you fold your hands, then you close your eyes, and then you start to pray. Instead, he gave them a sample prayer and then he said to them in Luke 11, verses 9 through 10, So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds, and to him who knocks, the door will be opened. So in other words, Jesus told his disciples that the most important rule of prayer is just do it. Yes. So when we come to church, we talk a lot about prayer. When someone is sick, we say, we need to pray for the sick and ask for healing. When someone might be having financial problems, we say we need to pray for the poor. When someone, <clears throat> um, or there might be conflict in our world, we say that we need to pray for peace. Um, so we talk a lot about prayer, but when we, what we really need to do is to just do it. In fact, right now, let's stop talking about it and just do it. So please join me in a prayer. 
Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for this day, and I thank you for all the families that have joined us this morning and all the children that uh, these families represent. And Lord, I just ask that you um, please help us to remember um, in our prayer lives at home and when we're out with our families that we just do it. We don't just talk about prayer, that we, we sit down and we, we just come to you with whatever um, our needs are and our uh, thanksgiving. And Lord, I just take this time right now to pray for those who might be sick. Um, pray for people who may not have the things that they need, like food. Um, and I also ask that you please um, just bring peace over our world and that um, if it be your will, we would all come back together next week. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So we think it's important um, that we continue the children's moment, even though children can't gather around, because it's not necessarily the gathering around part that's the most important, it's the reach of the message. And so uh, being able to, to include our children in our worship service and give them uh, a buy-in to our collective gathering uh, teaches them from a, lo a young age that worship is important and that coming together in church is important and that they have a voice in our church. And so we're so thankful that we have those who are willing to step up for children's moments. And so I'm asking that you consider doing that. I'm asking that um, if you receive an email from Christian Ed, that you be in prayerful thought instead of saying just no, I don't want to, or no, I can't, or I'm, I'm too concerned about being in front of people or on camera. Pray God gives you that courage and that strength to just come up with something small, a small message for our, our, our little people, our little friends, because that may be the message they remember and they take it to their friend or when school starts, they may take it to their school or they may take it to uh, a neighbor's house and they say, hey, guess what I learned? And it may be something that you've had an impact in a young life and you've, and you've, never, you've never realized that. So I encourage you to be in prayer, consider, prayerful consideration of helping us out on our children's moments and our children's ministry. So who saw God this week? Oh, we've gone back down in the hands. We'll have to, we'll have to figure out a way to get all the hands back up. Anybody want to share their God moment? Well, I think many of us saw the news the other night. I'll, um, I'll speak on behalf of Jane for a little bit. I won't give the full testimony of what she would like to give one day, but we saw the news of the homecoming of Ronnie Coltrane, and what a blessing that was. It was shared on our, our Facebook page. And, and so um, what, a, what a blessing to see him smiling, to see him do his 360 in his wheelchair on the deck. And still smiling and raising his hands and waving. If you don't think God is working, let me show you that video clip. Let me show you the posts that we saw each and every day of Ronnie's progress and sometimes his digress. And when they would try to take him off the ventilator or they would try to uh, reduce the oxygen, that something would happen and they'd have to re-increase it or increase it back up to, to whatever it was. And then to see after 72 days, 76 days, praise the Lord, he's home. And while he's not 100%, he's far better than what he was. And so God was working in his life, and we know that, um, his, that God is in his life and that he recognizes that and praises him daily. So we need to do the same. So that is a wonderful praise. Would anyone like to share a God moment? All right, well, I received a phone call yesterday from a wonderful dear friend, Charlie Ruth, who said he just wanted to tell us thank you for all that Sinner has been doing in their life, him and Mary, that they had just celebrated their 73rd wedding anniversary this past weekend, and that they got to meet together, what he says is in the woods at friend's home with some family, uh, and they had snacks and cake, and so I don't know what, I can't imagine what that looked like, but... Uh, but they met in the woods at friend's home, maybe in violation or didn't want to tell anybody they snuck out the back. But uh, they got to celebrate their 73rd wedding anniversary, and he was just thankful. He, he didn't say that we're happy that we've been married 73 years. He said we're happy that we've been together and that Sinner has been with us the majority of those years. And so he was very thankful for the church, very thankful for the presence, and very thankful for his friends. And so he wanted me to convey that to you. So that is a praise this morning. Any other praises that we need to celebrate? That's right. I believe we've got a riddle in the back uh, with his bionic hip. He's in the car back there. Uh, hopefully he can hear me, but we've got a David Riddle here this morning, and, and we've got, there he is, he's waving. 
And we've got Eloise and Calvin and Margaret. We've got the wonderful family there that is just, uh, I'm just so thankful that you, that you brought David and that you brought Eloise and that we could celebrate together. I don't know why she has that blanket on, but uh, it's not that cold. <laughs> but we're so thankful for them and so glad that they're here this morning. As with praises, we always have prayer requests. Uh, I'll start off with, um, again, praying for my mom, Betty, who uh, will be going undergoing surgery this Thursday on her neck at the hospital. So she has to go for the pre-op and the COVID test and all that stuff. And there's some apprehension there uh, to go into the hospital with the current climate of the virus and that sort of thing. So, And then, of course, actually having the surgery. So if you would pray for her and that her recovery, it's an outpatient, hopefully, surgery, and the recovery should be about two weeks, and then the doctor said she could go to the beach and do nothing. So that's a great recovery plan, uh, but hopefully that, that will be uh, successful and that she can have um, the, the issue in her neck repaired and, and help her arm and that sort of thing. Any other prayer requests we need to add? I have not. Now you got me curious. I had my ringer off. He has called me. He called me at 10 o'clock. Okay. So Bonnie's in the hospital, Bonnie Kirtman. So we want to make sure we remember Bonnie. She's been, and she's been battling back and forth in the hospital with some different things. She's on dialysis, of course, and so um, that puts her even at a higher risk. And so we want to remember Bonnie this morning. I'll call Jay when we leave church and kind of figure out what the need is there. And if there's something we can provide, I'll reach out to, to folks so we can do that. Thank you for letting me know, Wendelou. Any other prayer requests? So Sandy was saying Gail Wren, her sister, is waiting for some COVID results. She's been battling some symptoms. So we want to make sure we lift her up in prayer. Any others? Absolutely. So Roseanne ha and deliberately hit. Any others? Well, we know there are unspoken requests in our world, in our country, and also in our church community. So we'll lift up the unspoken requests that may be weighing on your hearts this morning. So let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you this morning that we can come together. We, we hear the breeze. We feel the breeze on our, on our faces this morning, and we, we recognize that you are present with us. We look over and see the cross draped in white for our risen Savior. And first and foremost, we praise your holy name for that. We praise you that you gave us a Savior to, to look up to, to teach us love and acceptance, to teach us to look out for our neighbor to give us guidance and direction on how to pray and to open that line of communication directly with you and that we can come to you with any need, with any concern, and you will be with us. We praise you for the recoveries all over our community, the recoveries from this awful virus that sometimes shows itself and sometimes does not. And so the, the unseen is what causes the fear. And we thank you that you have lifted Ronnie Coltrane up and that you have definitely placed your Holy Spirit in his life and you have healed him. We know that there's a recovery there and, and so we ask that you uh, give his family patience and understanding that you give him patience to take it one day at a time so that he can be 100% again. But we thank you for your, your presence and your healing hand on him over the last three months. Lord, we thank you for us to gather together today, and we thank you for those who have, through their charity and their, their willingness, have given us a, a, a place to come together and worship. 
We also thank you for Charlie and Mary and that you've given them 73 wonderful years of love and attention not only to each other but to you, Lord. That they've done so much for communities around them all over the country and all over the world. Their name rings through many different families and churches regardless of denomination. They help the least in all ways. And so we thank you for placing them here at center. We thank you for placing their, their spirit of love, their, their big heart for, for those in need, Lord, that they can be an example to other married couples, that they be an example to other disciples to follow you and your leading. Lord, any unspoken praises, you know the wonderful things people are doing in their life and doing in the lives of others, and we thank you for that. But we come to you with prayers. We come to you with uh, needs of healing, fears of test results, recoveries. We come to you with fears of unknown going on in our world today, Lord. I'm calling on you to intercede on our behalf, on all those who follow you. Place yourself, place your love and your grace and your mercy in those who are angry, those who are to do evil. Help them see the ways of coming together in peace and communication. Lord, we need you more than, than I think ever, Lord. We need your light to be shining through us. I'm asking to, for you to use us as your vessels. Use us as your lamps that we can spread the light of Christ in a world that is so desperately needing to drive out the darkness. Our hearts are hurt. Our emotions are angry. Soften us up. Mold us into what you want us to be. You are the potter and we are the clay, Lord, and I ask that you just mold us into what your will is. For all those battling medical issues, from being hit by a car to a COVID test to recovering from hip surgery, whatever it may be, place a veil of healing over them, Help them feel your presence in their life so that they can get better. They can live a life that you find worthy. And of course, Lord, as always, any unspoken request, you know what people are going through. Answer their need according to your will. And if it be not the answer that they want, help them understand the answer that you give so that we can better serve you. Again, we thank you and we praise you in all things. In Jesus' name, amen. So right now I'm going to ask Paul to uh, play a choir special that we uh, have recorded. And then after that, Deborah, bless Deborah's heart, she came up here and she recorded um, basically a studio session so that we could have some, some uh, music played here at Center. She, she met Paul last week, and so we have some music for her from her. But it will be Alleluia by the choir and then Be Thou My Vision from Deborah playing. Thank you.
because I could sit and listen to that all day. Before I get into my scripture this morning, I want to read a quote by Theodore Roosevelt. And then we'll go straight into the scripture. The quote is this. It is not the critics who counts, nor the person who points out where the doer of deeds could have done better. The credit belongs to the person who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs and comes up short again and again, who knows the great enthusiasms, the devotions, and spends himself or herself in a worthy cause, who at best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and at the worst at least fails while daring greatly, so that his or her place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who never know neither victory or defeat. If you have your Bibles this morning, or your Bible app, if you would go to Acts chapter 3. We are continuing our look at the first church uh, after the ascension of Jesus into heaven. We'll be looking at Acts chapter 3, verses 1 through 11. And it says, One day Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at 3 in the afternoon. Now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Then Peter said, Look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, Silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk, and then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Pretty easy story to kind of understand. Peter and John healed a man. This is the church's first recorded miracle, the new church, the Acts church's first recorded miracle. Now God was now ready to reach another a great harvest of new souls and it was now time to attract the attention of other people. So he reached down through Peter and John and healed a single man. This man was an interesting one because he was someone that everyone knew. He became filled with the Holy Spirit and was made to walk again. The miracle was more than just a miracle. It was a sign, a demonstration of God's power and him using others as witnesses, as messengers, as disciples. Jesus was working through his disciples. This encounter between the beggar, Peter, and John was just that. It was Jesus working through his disciples. Jesus' power on earth is still alive and moving. This was after his ascension, so the physical man had gone. He had died, he had rose again, he had come back to his disciples and ascended into the, to the heavens to be at the right hand of the Father. And yet his power on earth was still alive and working. It's still working in the lives of many all over the world, even today. His love and concern for the world is being shown through the actions of his disciples. Jesus is working through his disciples. So if Jesus is doing that, if he's working through his disciples, what do they look like? So looking at the first few verses, we can see that a disciple is one who was devoted to prayer. Peter and John were headed to the temple to pray at three in the afternoon. That was a prescribed time of prayer. And they came across this beggar. A disciple is one who sees a desperate need of people. Here they saw a crippled man begging for money and they heard his request for help. A disciple is one who then focuses his eyes and heart on the needs of others. In verse 4 it says Peter looked straight at him as did John. 
So it's interesting that that particular sentence was its own sentence. Peter looked straight at him. His attention focused directly on the beggar. It wasn't in passing. It wasn't walking by or driving by. It was focused directly into his eyes. They acknowledged and engaged with the man directly. They didn't keep walking. They didn't turn their head. They didn't remain silent when faced with someone in need. They looked straight at him. A disciple is one who reaches out to meet the needs of others. We can see that they did just that. They called for his attention. Listen to us. Look at us. And they provided for him. They provided a way of healing, a power of walking, a renewal of spirit and heart. They provided the Holy Spirit through the name of Jesus Christ. Friends, if we don't go and do and speak the work of God, the work doesn't get done. Hear me. Hear what i got to say now. Jesus has no feet, but he has our feet. He has our, no hands, but he has our hands. He has no voice, but he has our voice. The physical man of Jesus is gone. The King Jesus is alive. And we are his hands, we are his feet, and we are his voice. We are called to look and see the desperate need of the suffering. Not just physically, but spiritually. Now, how long had this man been begging? We aren't told exactly, but we can kind of derive that it's been a while because he specifically mentions in, in, the, in the, the scripture that he came there every day to the gate called Beautiful. So we know he wasn't just there on his first day. He came there every day. So picture this guy, a helpless cripple, unable to work, being ignored, maybe without a family or having to fend for himself but never fitting in and not being accepted. He wouldn't even look up at Peter and John. They had to tell him to look at us. He bore his shame and embarrassment each and every day. This man was suffering more than physically. He was suffering within and without. Maybe there's someone you know, or maybe you're that beggar today, looking to find acceptance physically, spiritually. Maybe you were begging for God uh, and there's a need or you're begging for a disciple's hand to tell you to get up and walk how much more painful is it to be ignored but how much more painful is it to be ignored by God's people disciples of Jesus profess a faith a love and we take action of being concerned for the welfare of others the needs exist around us and they are plenty just turn on the TV the power of the Holy Spirit can work through us, is working through us, because you're here today. You're here in worship. You're here in praise. You're here in prayer. Lord knows our world needs God's church to put action to faith and deliver results. Turn the TV on, folks. I don't know about you, but I'm tired. My heart hurts. I'm aggravated. I don't even know what I'm aggravated about. I'm just aggravated. I'm just aggravated. I'm mad. I'm sad. And I come from a couple different backgrounds of mad and sad for what I do outside of church. But I don't know, I don't know how to feel. I don't know what to do. But I do. Because I'm Jesus' disciple. We pray. We have faith. We put action into our faith and we deliver results. It isn't just enough that we see the need. It isn't just enough that we call attention to a need. Just being concerned and, and being aware of the needs of others does not meet the need. Peter acted. In fact, he did something quite dramatic. In the name of Jesus Christ, get up and walk. And the man did. Peter showed that Jesus Christ is alive and was working through him. We can see where Peter proved that uh, Jesus had risen. He's at the right hand of the Father. By speaking in the name of Christ, he gave him all authority as king. Additionally, Peter tells us where the power of Christ is not. In verse 6, Peter said, uh, Peter didn't have silver, he didn't have gold, 
He didn't give the guy money or clothing or food or shelter to offer. He didn't have any of that. He couldn't give those things to the man at that moment. But these were things that the man was expecting and wanted. It was what the man seemed to need in the eyes of the world. But the man needed much more than that. He needed to be changed inside and out. He needed to experience life change through the power of our resurrected Savior, of the Holy Spirit, of God the Father. Peter took the opportunity to demonstrate that the power exists in the name of Christ. Peter said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Nazareth, I tell you to walk. What a powerful statement that is. Because there is power in the name of Jesus. A couple of years ago, I delivered a sermon on prayer. I'm going to see who remembers. And I told the young people, if you don't know what to say, just say, say it louder. Say, say Jesus. Elizabeth's right. If you don't know what to say, just say Jesus. Because he knows there is power in that name. Having a strong trust in Christ, calling on him in our times of need and our time of praise can be powerful, can be a very impactful moment of change in somebody's life. Maybe you're on. Or maybe the person sitting next to you. Or maybe the person at home. Or maybe a total stranger. I mean, just saying his name is exciting. In the name of Jesus. I mean, I just feel, I don't know, I feel excited about it. It calls on the one who saved us from the depths of hell by the crucifixion on that cross. In verse 7, Peter called on the name of Jesus, and he took the man by the hand, helping him up, and the man began to walk. It says he jumped to his feet. He began walking and jumping and praising God. I can only imagine how miraculous, there's not even a word to describe it, how miraculous that would be. Can you picture the, the joy of this man who had just experienced an indwelling of the Holy Spirit? I mean, that's, that's just, it's awesome. So what were the results? Well, let's look at 9 through 11. When the man was seen by the people, they recognized him as the beggar, and they were filled with awe and wonder in amazement it says they were astonished and came running to him because they knew he had been truly healed they had seen him sit outside the gate called beautiful day in and day out and they knew he was carried there each and every day to beg for money and yet he was leaping for joy after being healed what a testimony that he had to tell others Jane and I were talking about maybe speaking one day, and now she said there's not enough time in open worship to give Ronnie's testimony, and I hope one day that Ronnie may come and share. It's my prayer that Ronnie will come and share what God has done in his life because that's a testimony. As disciples of Jesus Christ, devoted, devoted to seeing and focusing on the needs around us, calling on the name of Jesus and what we do, what results are we producing? What are our results? If you read the church sign, it says faith plus action equals results. You take one out of the equation and you have an empty answer. It's a pretty simple math problem. Putting your action where your faith is will deliver results that will not only cause praise and glory to our most powerful God, but will cause real life change in someone else who may desperately need it. Our world is hurting. In so many ways, we went from praising nurses and doctors and we lift them up for being the essential workers to fires, broken windows, injustices, voices being cried out for change in a matter of days. Our world is hurting. We still have poverty in other countries. But guess what? We have poverty here. We have poverty maybe next door to you, down the street, across the road. We have needs here. And sometimes I think people are simply waiting for God's disciples to do something. I sometimes think the world is the beggar and we are the ones walking by. Now, if your toes hurt, like I always say, 
mine are bleeding because I walk by. I find myself driving by and walking by, and I see needs, and I recognize needs, and yet I still don't have that jump for a miracle. I know we can't change it all, but we can change our little world around us. We can impact change even in just one person's life. And then that person can then change someone else's life. And then it continues on. We can make a difference as the disciples of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ. So I found, a, I was looking through my most favorite book. I read it sometimes. I think I probably read it 25 or 30 times over my life. And I came across it a week ago, and I shared it with a friend of mine. And this has really spoken to my heart, and, and it's a poem. And I want to read that to you, and I want you to, it, it's a funny book, it's a great book, but this is a deep poem that I want you to listen, just listen to. The book is called Where the Sidewalk Ends, and it's by Shel Silverstein. How many people know the book? Wonderful, wonderful book. It's a great, it's hilarious. There's some funny things in here, but there's some life lessons. And so I want to read you the poem called Traffic Light. The traffic light simply would not turn green, so the people stopped to wait. As the traffic rolled and the wind blew cold and the hour grew dark and late. Zoom, vroom, trucks, trailers, bikes, and limousines. Clattering by, me oh my, won't that light turn green? But the days turned weeks. And the weeks turned months, and there on the corner they stood, twiddling their thumbs till the changing comes the way good people should. And if you walk by that corner now, you may think it's rather strange to see them there as they hopefully gaze with their very same smile on their very same face as they patiently stand in the very same place and wait for the light to change. Are we standing on the corner with the very same smile on our very same face, patiently waiting in the very same place, waiting for the light to turn green? Peter and John didn't just stand on the street corner waiting for the light to change. Their faith plus action equaled a life change resulting in a healing for a beggar, which then created a testimony to the presence of Jesus and the awesome power of the Holy Spirit. The very first miracle of the new church in Acts shows us that Jesus is alive and he is working through his disciples. He is working through you. If you're not a disciple of Jesus Christ, if, you, if you're not sure about that, recognize and see that there are needs around you and that there are those around you who can provide for you. You are being called to something greater, something bigger, something that takes us outside of our little circle to affect real life change and we do so in the name of our Savior our world is hurting there is chaos there is meanness there is division and yet there's one solid foundation in our Savior who is still working through his disciples and the work of those disciples is bringing people together in the spirit of love and salvation and reconciliation the first church changed the world around them. Was it easy? Huh, no. But here we are over 2,000 years later, and guess what? The church of Jesus Christ is still here meeting on this very hill this Sunday morning on this beautiful day. They did something right. So I leave you with this, and we go into open worship. How about we stop waiting for the light to change? It's time to stop traffic. Be in prayer that we stop waiting for the light to change with the very same smile on our very same face as we stand in the very same place. Don't wait for the light. Stop the traffic. Amen.
Father, as we depart this place this morning, we ask for your protection, your guidance. We ask for your healing hand over us, individually, as families, as a church community, and as a nation in a world. Lord, the needs are great. The needs can be even outside what we consider normal needs. Something as simple as a listening ear can be all the need. Something simple as a calm conversation, clear communication, may be the only need. But Lord, sometimes the need is greater than that. It's the need of life change. It's the need of our hearts being broken, our eyes being opened, to seeing what's around us, to seeing the beggar on the corner. We are so grateful and so in all of your power and your mightiness in our, in our world and in our lives. You have changed so much each and every day. You raise the sun. You blow the wind. You stir us to move about and to love one another. As we depart this place, break our hearts. Engage us in honest conversations. Check our emotions. Check our biases and the way we see the world. Draw us closer to your word. Draw us closer to your cross and draw us closer to the power of the Holy Spirit. Let us be your disciples, Lord. Let us be your vessels. Let us be your hands, your feet, and your voice. Give us the actions. We have the faith. We produce the results. But in all things, we praise you and we love you. And we worship you with every fiber of our being, every breath in our lungs, and every minute of the day. You are King of kings and Lord of lords, and we are so grateful for that. It's in the power of the name of Jesus Christ that we pray. Amen. Have a great week.